I'm in the graphics versus features DGN file. All right, this is in a nutshell the difference between open roads and regular graphics. Okay, I will go ahead and I'll just, this is about these T's over here. Um, kind of teasing you with the T's, but in any case, I'm going to do a just a regular microstation line. Line, okay, another line, and I'm going to use the perpendicular. There we go. So you saw that snap there, it was perpendicular. If I click on it, regular graphics just completely forgot that there was a perpendicular relationship there. So if I move these, there's no relationship. It's just completely, it forgot, it has no memory. Open Roads, on the other hand, does remember. So if I click on that, uh, that, uh, that center line, essentially, edge of pavement here, notice it remembers that there was a perpendicular relationship. Okay, snaps are relationships. If I move the uh, edge of pavement, that side street uh, center line remains perpendicular to it. Okay? If I move this, it remains perpendicular. Okay? That is the fundamental difference between open roads and regular graphics. Open roads remembers the relationship. And that's a core thing. It's not something at the periphery of the program. It is core fundamental open roads. And that's why it's better than graphics. It remembers. So if the T didn't impress you, let's ramp things up a little. Little little highway joke there of ramping things up. But if I look at, uh, if I click on that, that is, anything that's black is regular graphics. Anything that is a color is open roads. So if I click on two lines and arc there, editability is kind of, ran not random, but generic. If I click on an open roads element, we get a heads up display. I can change uh, radius here. Uh, I get more predictable than a civil engineering way, uh, editability. But the important thing is the relationships. So things were drawn, these little side roads were drawn the exact same way, whether it was just regular graphics or was open roads. But remember what open roads remembers. It remembers the relationship. So if I click on this, I can see that I was 60 feet off. Uh, I'll say minus 120. Okay. And notice the edge pavements uh, all in the fillets all move. Uh, over here, uh, there's no relationship. Uh, if I move this, I'm going to move the edge pavement here, excuse me, the center line, everything goes with it. Okay, the fill is up here, all good. Okay, um, notice the regular graphics, forgot there was a relationship to the center line. The edge of pavement is completely random, it's isolated, it's all by itself. There's no relationship. Open roads remembers. Uh, I'm going to grab this, move it over. It was perpendicular. How do I know it was perpendicular? There's a perpendicular graphic. The heads up display lets me know what the relationship is. So as I move it, it remains perpendicular. I can do things like, again, there's relationships here. I'm going to right click on this and I can change this from a, it's a rather broad road, but I can uh, right click. <clears throat> here we go. Oh, come on. Operator, all right, there we go, minus 36. I can change the size of that font if I want to make it a little easier for myself. Uh, there we go. So those smart edits, uh, relationships that are maintained, these are some of the advantages of using open roads versus graphics. I'm looking at these tapers here. Uh, there is a really tight relationship between the heads up display and the properties dialog. Tapers are a bit tough, and we'll spend some time on them, um, primarily because in when you're creating tapers, generally there's a couple ways. Uh, there's two different ways to build them based on what's the engineering priority. Are the offsets the primary concern and the taper length, the ratio at which it, it tapers, it transitions from one uh, offset to the other? Is, is it secondary to the final offsets or is the offset secondary to the ratio okay that's not something that's really intuitive from the heads up display you can change things as you normally would but sometimes it may behave differently than you expect because we don't really know from this what constraint was the uh, the primary one if i go to properties properties tells you that okay this was done with the ratio uh, versus the uh, variable variable offset Okay. And you can change it in utilities. So just be aware that the heads-up display, while really, really um, robust, 
there are there are some subtleties that sometimes you may have to look into the properties to see what's going on. But again, you can uh, edit this all sorts of different ways. Uh, just be aware that design intent isn't clear on that un unless you look at the uh, the properties. We'll do this later uh, in a later exercise. We'll do a, a variable offset uh, taper and a ratio taper uh, to show you what the difference is. I am now in the Beyond CL DGN file um, under Open Roads Modeling Geometry. I have opened up the Feature definition toolbar. I'm going to set this. Everything we're doing for quite some time here will be edge of pavement. So, regardless of the tool I use, I would like the feature definition, the element type, the color, the symbology, and all that to be roadway, uh, excuse me, edge of pavement. And by clicking that on, everything is automatically set to edge of pavement. So, I'm good. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some offsets. Uh, this is a center line of a side road here and I am going to put edge of pavement 11 feet from the center line. So I will go to geometry, horizontal, offsets, and tapers. And I'm going to do single offset entire. That means it'll go the entire length of the center line. Uh, it'll be 11 feet out. So I'll type in 11. I want both sides to be done so I can uh, leave the mirror clicked on. Do want to make sure it says use active feature is edge of pavement. Uh, name is not important right now. You can type something in if you'd like. You call that east-west uh, edge of pavement. Uh, let's follow the heads-up display. You don't have to use the tool settings uh, except for the name. Uh, you can just follow the heads-up display and I'll do that now. So it says locate element and I am going to, if I pick the tangent now, it's just going to do an offset of the tangent. There you go. See that? Uh, I'm going to grab the the arc, and the whole uh, element gets picked. So I'm going to hit data points. I'm going to say, do you want to mirror it? Yes. Okay, now the mirror doesn't actually create a relationship between these two elements. It just does it twice for you. The relationship is actually to the center line, and I can tell by clicking on it, and you can see it shows you the relationship. And these are smart relationships, and I can say minus. Minus means to the left. So I know it's going from west to east, uh, 22. There we go. So you can see smart. Yeah, let's do an undo. Go back to 11. So oh, goody. Yeah, uh, that's email for my private jet. Yes, yeah, so I'll be signing right up on that. Sorry, I should have turned off the, all right, so minus 11. All right, uh, something else I want to show you is, before I start messing things around, I should have set a mark, okay? That's an undo mark. So if I say, hey, let's show you that if I move the center line, my edge of pavements are smart. They're smart. If I change the radius of that curve to, to 500, that's not 500, that's 600. See how everything's smart? Okay, I can play around all day long, and at the end I can say undo to mark. There we go. Okay, I'm going to add edge pavements to the north-south road there, and that will be the same thing. Offset some tapers. Um, I'm going to follow the prompt and hit the center line. I want it to be 18 feet this time, so I type in 18, data point, data point. We're good. It's that simple. That only took a few seconds. So I have edge of pavements, but clearly I don't want this edge of pavement. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.